Okay, so let's continue with outcome R3. Uh, right now we're going to look at quadratic functions in vertex form. And we're going to notice it looks a little different than what we were dealing with before. It's, this form is actually really nice uh, because we can get a lot of information by just looking at it. Well, namely, the vertex. Uh, so we've got our A, we've got a bracket, and then we have an X minus H, and then we close our bracket, and then everything inside that set of brackets is squared. Uh, and then we add a value of k. <clears throat> so what is each thing doing? Well, the number in this position, it tells us what the direction of opening is and the width of the parabola. The number in this position here is, it tells us the x value of the vertex. Okay, And also that tells us the uh, equation for the axis of symmetry. So it's kind of really nice to have it right there. And now one thing that you also have to remember is that the number in this position, the value of h that we're using is going to be opposite to the connecting sign. So we'll see another example, we'll see an example of that a little uh, later on. And then the number in this position here is the y value of the vertex. So we'll see what kind of an impact that has. So if we look at what effect uh, changing the a value uh, has when we have y equals ax squared, uh, if a is positive, then the graph opens upwards. If a is negative, then the graph opens downwards. This can also be thought as of a reflection about the x-axis. And if the value of a is positive, then we end up with our quadratic opening up. And if it's negative, then it opens down. So that's just a quick sketch of what it looks like. If the value of a is between negative 1 and 1, which basically means if it's uh, a fraction that's like a half or a third, uh, negative a half, negative a third, um, the parabola appears to be wider. We could also think of it as the absolute value of a being less than one. Now, if the value of a is greater than one or smaller than negative one, the parabola appears to be narrower. So that's if we have an a value of 2 or negative 2 or 5 or 100, negative 1000, etc. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just sketch and compare these graphs here. And, and I want you to do that by making a table of values and setting it up this way. So you've got your x, you've got your x squared, 2x squared. And then we're going to have our uh, input values of negative 3, negative 2, 1, 0, 2, 3. And um, I want you to see what you come up with. Fill, press pause and fill out at least the first one. Okay, so now that we're back, uh, the values there are 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. We just square the x values. And here for this one, uh, all we do is we take the values that are right next door and just double them because it's two times. And then for this, we just take the values from x squared and half them. Now we get those. So that's a real quick way of doing it. Uh, now uh, what we're going to do is just quickly sketch those points on a graph and see what you end up getting. So make sure you graph those two points, those two points, and those two points right there. So those are going to be three different points on three different graphs. So just sketch them all on the same coordinate set. OK, so now that we've got these uh, sketches, I want you to notice that um, the middle one is x squared. And this one is 1 half x squared, which is wider than our x squared. And then, so this is our x squared. And then this here is the 2x squared, where it appears to be narrower than our parent function of x squared. 
All right, so we're going to do the same thing on the next page. Set up the same kind of idea, set up the same uh, table of values, and really you don't even have to redo the table of values. Just look at the one that we just did and what's going to happen to each value in uh, x squared, 2x squared, and negative 1 half x squared. That's right, they're all just going to flip and become negative. So now that we've got a quick sketch of those, uh, we notice same thing. So you got your negative half x squared, that's wider than your parent function. Uh, you've got the 2x squared, which is your negative 2x squared, which is narrower. And uh, you've got your three comparisons of them, and you could see the a value, how it affects the width of our parabolas. Okay, so now on the next page, we're going to be changing the value of k. So how does this affect? Well, when we have x squared plus k, the image of our graph x squared ends up looking like it's uh, a vertical shift. And vertical is up and down. All right, so we're going to move the entire graph up or down k number of units, whatever k is. If k is positive, then the graph actually shifts up. And if k is negative, the graph actually shifts down. Now, what I want you to try is, uh, so first we're going to graph x squared. And we already know what x squared looks like. So why don't you press pause right now, get a little practice doing that. So hit pause now. Okay, so now we're back, and I'm just going to quickly graph x squared here. And then um, it's it's easy to just kind of do the, the points in the first quadrant, and then you could just use the reflection of the points to get them in the second quadrant. Connect the dots with a nice curve. Make sure you're curved at the bottom. Put arrowheads. And now take each one of those points and shift them two units up. So that point goes up 1, 2, plot a point there. That goes up 1, 2, plot a point there. OK, so we're going to do that to every point on this graph. Take your vertex. Now your vertex is at 0, 2, and connect those new points all together. This is the graph of x squared plus 2. So compare it to x squared it's up two units because of that plus two. All right, so can you imagine what's going to happen with x squared minus three? Each point is going to shift down three units. So hit pause, try it. OK, so now we move three units down for each one. And our vertex now ends up at 0, negative 3. And then take those points, down 3, down 3 from there, from our parent function, x squared. And then you could just use the reflection to go from there to there. And once you have all those points plotted, just connect them with a nice curve. Make sure your vertex, uh, the curve that you're drawing at your vertex looks like a nice uh, smooth curve and not pointy or anything like that, because that's something totally different. So there you go. That's y equals x squared minus 3. OK. So you see here, the x squared minus 3 moves down 3, so it's below our parent function x squared. All right, so the last thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at changing the value of h in y equals h minus x squared. Now, the graph of y equals x minus h squared is the graph of y equals x squared after a horizontal shift of h units. So that means we're moving left or right, depending on the value of h. So the value of h is opposite to the connecting sign. So right here, if we have y equals x minus 3, the value of h is 3. If we have x plus 2, then the value of h is minus 2. So those are the reasons right there. Now, 
what I'd like you to do is exactly the same thing that we've done before uh, using the parent function. Gra graph the parent function x squared real quick. Uh, just plot those few points. And then from there, you're going to graph x minus 3 squared. So do that right now. Hit pause. Okay. All right. So now that is x squared. And what you're going to do to each of those points in x squared for x minus 3 all squared, we're going to do a shift of 3 units to the left. So there's our x minus 3. Parent function is 3 units, sorry, to the right. All right, so take the vertex, move it over 3 units to the right because the h value the value of h is positive so take that point move it right 3 units take that point move it right 3 units that point move it right 3 units so since the value of h is 3 x minus 3 is a shift of 3 units to the right connect your points now your vertex is at 3 comma 0 Okay, so we're going to do uh, x plus 4 all squared now. So can you guess what's going to happen? It's going to move 4 units to the left because the value of h here is negative 4. So our vertex is going to end up at negative 4, 0. So we just took 0, 0, moved it left 4 units, and that's where it ended up. Okay, so there's the graph of x plus 4 squared. And we can compare the vertices of all of these. So you got 0, 0, and then you've got the second one we did. And now this third one here, x plus 4 all squared, each point there is just moved over 4 units. Hi, okay, so let's look at example five now. Uh, given the following equation, what we're going to do is determine uh, this information here, and we're also going to do a sketch. So the easiest thing to pluck off right away is the vertex. So we take the value of h here, which is negative 1, and the value of k, which is 12. So that makes up our vertex, negative 1, 12. The axis of symmetry is the x value of the vertex, which is negative 1. Uh, direction of opening, well, we know it opens down because we have a negative right in front there. So it opens down. So that means it's going to look like that. Okay. Uh, our y-intercept, well, we need to calculate where uh, what y equals when x equals 0. So why don't you hit pause real quick uh, just on the side somewhere here. You can solve what this is going to be and just make sure that you're following your order of operations correctly. Okay, and when you do that, you end up with uh, 9. Okay, so our y-intercept is going to be at 0, 9. So let's just put that on right now. Just why not? And let's go ahead and put on our uh, vertex as well. So where's our vertex going to go? At negative 1 and 12. Okay, so the scale here stops at 10. So I'm just going to say that that's 12, and I'm going to label it just so that we all know that that's where that point is supposed to be. Uh, so here the domain is going to be x is an element of the reals. And the range, well, since we know it opens down, the highest point it ever gets is the vertex. What's the y value? That's 12. So we're never going to get a y value more than 12. So our range is going to be y is less than or equal to 12. Uh, that's going to also tell us that we've got a maximum, and our maximum is at 12. Uh, if we look at our zeros, we need to figure out where 
y equals 0 what the x values are. And in order to do that, you can very simply solve this. OK, so take a second and uh, solve that. There's a couple of different ways you can do so. Uh, why don't I show you? Hang on. So hit pause, give it a try, and then I'll come back and I'll show you the two ways. All right. So let's say we wanted to solve this. OK. Uh, there's one way that you would probably do where you would uh, just go through and expand this quadratic here, uh, plus 12. So this is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1. And we add the 12, multiply the 3 through. We end up with negative 3x squared uh, minus 6x minus 3 plus 12. And we get minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 9. OK, so now from this point, we would factor, right? So you take out the negative 3, and we end up with x squared minus 2x plus 3. And then if we factor this part here, we end up with our 2x intercepts, so I've got x minus 3 and x plus 1. OK, so now we're at the expanded and simplified phase. Uh, so what we want to do is factor out this negative 3. So we end up with x squared plus 2x minus 3. OK, so we can factor out what's in the bracket. And we end up getting uh, plus 3 and minus 1. So x is equal to negative 3. And x is equal to positive 1. So those are our x-intercepts. Uh, there's another way to do it where you just start right from here. And you run through the order of operations as there was uh, backwards, just like you're solving. So minus 12 on both sides, you end up with negative 12 equals negative 3x plus 1. And that's squared. Now, in order to get rid of the squared, we square root both sides. Uh, but before we do that, we have to divide by negative 3. So simplify that part first. We end up with positive 4 equals, and then x plus 1 squared. Now we can get rid of that squared. So square root both sides. We end up with plus minus 2 on this side here for the 4. And then this equals x plus 1. All right, well, x still isn't isolated. So let's isolate x by subtracting a 1 on both sides. And how do we deal with that part? Interesting. What this says is 1 is 1 plus or minus negative 2. So we actually have two things that we need to figure out. x could be this, or x could be this. So for this case, we end up with. 1. And in this case, we end up with negative 3. So you see here, we got the same exact answer as we got above. OK, so that was a little side note. So our zeros, let's record them in here, uh, are negative 3 and 1. And then that also tells us the x-intercepts. So negative 3, 0, and 1, comma 0. All right. So the last thing that we're going to look at is the vertical stretch factor. And that's based on the a value of our equation, which is negative 3. So that means it's stretched by a factor of 3. OK, so that's the vertical stretch factor. And it's also reflected about the x-axis. OK, so let's look at what this graph is going to do. Um, we've got our 
vertex already plotted. We've got our y-intercept already plotted. Uh, the next best thing to do is plot your x-intercepts. So that's going to be negative 3, 0 and at 1, 0. And we can get another point out of here by simply looking at the points as a mirror image of each other. So where would I plot this point? The mirror image of this would be right here. So now we can connect it, make it a curve there, and it's going to go through the x-intercepts right there. Okay, so that's what a, a rough sketch is going to look like. All right, so what I want you guys to do is I want you to try this question on your own by the same properties. Uh, figure out what the vertex is, uh, get your x-intercepts, get your y-intercept, and use the axis of symmetry to get another point so that you can make your graph. Uh, so hit pause right now and then come back when you're done to check your solution. Okay, so now that you're back, uh, we're looking at this question right here. Here, I'll show you the question just to make sure. Uh, now, we got the vertex as negative 2, because it's opposite to the connecting sign right in there, and negative 1. Uh, we know that it opens up because this is positive right here. Uh, we know the domain is x is an element of the real numbers. Uh, the min value is the y value of the vertex, so it's negative 1. Uh, axis of symmetry, that's the x value of the vertex. We've got x equals negative 2. Um, and then for the y-intercept, what you do is you set x equal to 0. And here I'll show you that work right there. So right here I've done the work for the y-intercept. So you set y equal to so, sorry, x equal to 0, and then you solve, and you end up with 5 thirds as being our y-intercept. Um, from the vertex, we're going to get the range. It's the y-value of the vertex. We know that it opens up, so we've got a minimum, and everything is going to be bigger than the negative 1. Our vertical stretch factor is the a-value, so that's 2 thirds. And in order to figure out the zeros and the x-intercepts, that's basically the same idea, right? It's the same thing. Where does the graph cross through the x-axis? Um, I did it this way here. It's uh, not always nice whole numbers. So here's, a, here's an example with numbers that aren't perfect, uh, nice whole numbers. So we end up with 0 0.775 and negative 3.225. So let me show you what a graph of this looks like. So you kind of have to approximate the uh, graph. So let's slide this in here. Okay. And this here, we notice I can follow along uh, and show you that the vertex, that's our local minimum. So that's the minimum value that the graph ever gets. It's at negative 2, negative 1. And then if I slide up here, okay, see that's my x-intercept. And over here, this is my other x-intercept. And my y-intercept is right there. It's 5 thirds. Okay, so uh, you need to be able to sketch these. Um, and label those important points that we've done so. There's one more thing that I want to mention about uh, a little bit of an easier way to figure out what the A value is. If you look right here on the graph, you've got the vertex, right? Now look at the uh, y-intercept right there, okay? I want you to look at the graph here. Um, how many units does it go up? And how many units does it go over till it gets to that point? Think about it. Look at the graph really carefully. And look at the A value. It goes up three units and over two units. See how you can connect those, that thing right there, with the vertical stretch factor of uh, two over three in this question. Okay? Let's go to the next one. The next one, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to try the question. 
Uh, so hit pause, try this one again, and uh, I'll show you the solution. Uh, well, I guess when you hit replay. All right, so uh, this question right here, we've got a vertex of, so this one's a little easier, um, 3, negative 5. Direction of opening is down. The domain is XER. The max min, well, we know that it's going to have a max because it is that kind of a shape. So the max is the y value of the vertex, so that's negative 5. Um, and then the axis of symmetry, that's where x equals 3. Uh, the y-intercept ends up at 0 and negative 23. Uh, that's actually not on this graph. This is going to be way down there, right? So my scale doesn't doesn't account for that here. Uh, our range, it's going to be y is less than or equal to negative 5. Our vertical stretch factor is 2, and it reflects as well on the x-axis. Okay. Okay, so now, first of all, I want you to look at where the vertex is going to be placed. So the vertex is going to be at 3 and negative 5, so that's somewhere there. So 3, comma, negative 5, label your vertex. And then the direction of opening is down. Okay, so let's kind of uh, extend this and imagine that this is negative 23 here. Um, our parabola is going to go and do this kind of thing, right? Because it opens down. Now, the reason I drew this before is to show you that, well, this doesn't cross the x-axis. So it's kind of interesting. So there are no zeros. So you need to state that there are no zeros for this. And uh, also, there are going to be no x-intercepts if there aren't any zeros, because really, it doesn't even cross through. Uh, so just remember that there is a possibility that you can have no answer for something like this. And then we can also, um, we'll analyze this a little more in another outcome where we solve for the roots and uh, we can actually determine that there are no roots based on the kind of number that comes out of it. All uh, right, so now we've got this question here. Clean algebra. Find the equation of the function whose vertex is 4, negative 7, and passes through the point 2, 9. All right. So we know right away that it's going to have this form because we've got x minus, and then we've got our x value of our vertex here squared, and then our shift down of 7. So that's going to be just so. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to use this point and stick it in there somehow. So think about this. If this is x and that's y, what are you going to do? Uh, well, if we put the 9 there in place of the y, well, we don't have anything for a. Uh, we can stick the 2 in there and solve that. What are we left with? The only thing we don't know is a, so we need to solve for the value of a. So just real quick. 9 equals a minus 2 squared minus 7, and we end up with, that's 7 on both sides, 16 equals a times 4, divide both sides by 4, and we get a has a value of 4. Very exciting. All right. So now we're going to end up with uh, this information. And that, what we do is we put it back into that right there. So we can take this A, make it a 4, and then that's going to give us our final answer. So we end up with Y equals 4X minus 4 squared minus 7. All right. Okay, 
So what I want you to do is make sure you get some practice and uh, try these things and make sure you ask questions. Thanks.